शिव प्रसाद आई वे सभी को उम्र से मैं सही लेकिन विद्या के मैं कुछ कोशिश करूंगा जो मैं रिसर्च कर पाया हूँ मैं इंट्रोडक्शन के जाने को मना कर दिया तो क्या है क्रिकेट आपको बनाने के बाद मेरी हस्ती से कितनी है कि मैं अपनी जाति को कैसे कर पाए I won't read out the script as to you, but it says one, uh, one who refers to taking the front commitment, one who does not waste much until the task is completed, one who does not waste time and who controls his thoughts, his wife. This verse focuses on hard work, time management, and mental peace, which is essential for them to do that. So it's a good segue into what I'm going to talk about next. Uh, when I spoke with Victor, I'm going to talk about his work uh, in the 16 volumes. Uh, he said it has to be a modern philosophy. I decided to come with eight philosophies, although I always only them. That's not my idea. He said two. But uh, I have come with eight philosophies of leadership. And what I've tried to do is draw parallels between the philosophies of leadership we've all grown up learning and map them to the philosophies that we find in the human being. I'm going to run through a little part because I'm on slides to cover and I have a 10 minute time on the plane. Well, okay, so leadership philosophy in the ancient generation. The first one talks about servant leadership. That's what all of us have read during the enough management schools when they talk about that. If you come down to Hindu philosophy, the name is Seva Dharma. Okay. Now, what is Seva Dharma? Seva Dharma is a leadership style that emphasizes serving and empowering others. Leaders who adopt this approach prioritize the needs of their team members, customers, the community over their own interests. This style is leadership is often associated with empathy, active listening, and a focus on the well-being and development of others. What I'm doing now is The second philosophy that we are moving to is the school leadership and as the leadership of the school and all of that is like this government. What is Raj Dharma? Raj Dharma translated, translates to the duty of rulers in Sanskrit. We spoke about this in that, for example, that came from the kingdom. Then, it refers to the moral and ethical responsibilities that leaders, especially rulers and kings, have towards their subjects in Hindu philosophy. Although this concept originated in the context of governance of India, its principles are mm-hmm. relevant in the modern organizational context, as well as its decision making and responsible leadership going on at home. Now, the first thing that is going on is that Okay. 
So, yes, what we actually do is the dimensions that form part of the physical is the 10 dimensions that actually form part of the physical system. Alright? Uh, one of the aspects I think is the right uh, people who are here since morning have spoken about the concept. I'm not going to get well into deeper aspects of the physical system. So, what is Raj Dharma? Raj Dharma is uh, the concept and the sports and the physical system is one of the leadership. Incorporating this principle in modern organizations can contribute to a positive workplace culture, enjoy well being and sustainable business practices, aligning the organization with broader societal values. Third, there's transformation leadership as well as modern organizations. This is the building disciple relationship that is people have. Uh, you don't have to make a note of the presentation. Right? So the Guru Disciple Leadership style inspired the Christian Hindu philosophy and mentoring relationships. We spoke about mentoring in the morning. In this model, leadership is seen as a form of mentorship that wise and experienced leader, the Guru, guides and imparts knowledge and skills and wisdom to a less experienced follower or the disciple. So, dimensions that become part of this entire philosophy and mentorship and guidance and knowledge are so we're modeling all the management in this world that we've been running around all our lives and without it. This is the philosophy of Guru type of relationship, and that's what it actually can drive. So, while the Guru type of model is being used in the spiritual and physical type of relationship, its principles can also be applied in modern organizations and can be the best in the future. The fourth is visionary leadership, and this is one of my favorites because it talks truly about history, history, and fun. Don't come back into my talk in this or in the ancient history. So what is this is the same matter is a concept rooted in Indian philosophy, particularly in Vedanta, which translates the same as creator. In the context of this and leadership, this is the same matter refers to the idea that the leader's vision and perception shape the reality and future of the organization or community they lead. It emphasizes the power of visualization, intention, and positive thinking in shaping outcomes and success in the venture. The dimensions are, are the eight dimensions of this and leadership. And my request to you uh, all is not to be a small comment to that. The whole of these presentations will be shared with all of us that we've seen. It's a public document, it will be shared. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Fifth, charismatic leadership. So, everything that we've learned about leaders, first thing, Servant, a total, continuously, visually, charismatic. And in this study, I thank God. This photo is actually forced me to get down and look at all of this. Because I realized all these functions actually evolved from the ancient individual, which we are so popular in as the Western country. What is the charismatic leadership? We spoke about Atma. And Atma and Charisma is what the charismatic leadership is. That's the definition of charisma. Okay? It's important to note that while charisma can be a powerful leadership quality, it should be complemented by other leadership skills such as effective communication, empathy, and the ability to lead and manage effectively. Charisma leaders can inspire and motivate their followers, the voice and the family of the situation in the country that is as well as organizing for as they do. Again, that's a summary of what is the style of the we move to the next one, that is resilient leadership, which as per the rule in symbolism is mixed karma karma. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What is this karma karma? This karma karma is a concept from the new philosophy that translates into satisfaction. It emphasizes the performing one's duties and actions without any attachment to the result. Sir, I can say that karma is a karma karma. This is what it actually comes back to. Nishtam Karma, selfless action. And the dimension that forms part of this Nishtam Karma are these 10 dimensions that you can sort of work on, and that's what in summary goes about Nishtam Karma. Next one, adaptive leadership. Change as the only constant in what we call in Hindu mythology is 
Chain management we spoke about. So I also spoke about chain management, not chain management, but chain management. Okay? The concept of NFTR meaning impermanence of chain is the fundamental principle in data management of the two different positions in the data. It asserts that all things including situations and circumstances are temporary and subject to change. In the context of adaptive leadership, recognizing and embracing the inevitability of change is crucial. Here's how the idea of Anitya relates to adaptive leadership. These are the nine dimensions of Anitya, or leadership, adaptive leadership, the practice of change, and that's the kind of wider field. Moving on to that. The last one, inclusive leadership, is a very good thing for all of us here. What is inclusive leadership? Vasudev Kutumbukam is a Sanskrit name from the ancient Indian scriptures, translates to the world as one family. The concept embodies the essential inclusive leadership, emphasizing that the idea that all people, regardless of differences in national, race, religion, or culture, belong to a shared devoted community. In context of inclusive leadership, Vasudev Kutumbukam signifies seven principles, and these are the ten principles to form part of the leadership philosophy of the These were the eight uh, leadership philosophies I want to practically present to you. As I said, uh, these philosophies can be used individually based on three models that I can think of. One philosophy, of course, being uh, each of these philosophies can be actually part of the journey of the leader and the maturity level that the leader needs to achieve as he is in place. Second uh, aspect or model can be where you pick up different dimensions to each of these philosophies to come up with a model. And third and most important, I can uh, search with a skill. Now, now search with a skill. And whenever somebody speaks about skill, it's not going to be a skill. Most of the jobs that I do, I sort of skill with a skill. Three key words come to my mind. And again, no material than language is going to be able to make us understand the concept of skills much better. The three words are Gyan, Gaushal, and Gyan. In layman's terms, what is skill? Skill is to store knowledge. When you have knowledge to do something and you're able to display it while doing the job, that's the most important skill. That's the Gyan. Gaushal is whether you're able to convert your knowledge into a particular skill is Gaushal. That's the beautiful skill. Lotita is the proficiency of the expertise you achieve while practicing that skill. So these three concepts need to come into play when we are trying to create a leadership model that's extremely important. With that, I should take to you that in my 10 minutes are up. And uh, I'm sorry I lost through the entire thing, but uh, I can't just take it. Thank you, Shri Thank you very much.